So in the in the last video we we kind of went through the details of understanding where this formal definition of the limit comes from. Um, we've, we've restated it sort of an abridged version of that definition here. So as a reminder, when we say that the limit of some function is L as X approaches C, um, we're saying that um, for any epsilon, so epsilon is some number here which represents sort of an error or a tolerance, right? What epsilon is representing is, you know, here's, okay, so this value here is L, right? And an epsilon is giving you some, some range around L. So it's, you, you're going at distance of epsilon either side of L. So from L plus epsilon to L minus epsilon, right? And the definition is saying that given any epsilon, right? And, and again, the, you want to think of uh, this as meaning sort of no matter how small, um, you can come up with this delta so that as long as you take x to be within a distance of delta from c, f of x will be within epsilon of l, right? And, and sort of graphically, the way you work this out is once you've chosen your epsilon, you can, you can follow, you know, follow things over to your graph. And then you go down. And you get this interval around your C value, which is here. And as long as X is in this interval, your Y value is going to be where you need it to be, right? And so when you're trying to come up with your delta, you choose the smaller of the two. So it looks like maybe this side is a little bit smaller, right? So you take your delta to be that. Um, and you'll use that um, to kind of set things up and, and work through the proof. Uh, but the, the trick is that you have to do this, you know, algebraically, symbolically, right? Because you, you can't draw a new picture for, for every possible value of epsilon. You want to make your argument general. Uh, that said, uh, let's see what happens for a particular choice first, and then, and then we'll expand from there, right? Um, so in this example, we're dealing with a square root function. So let's say, let's say epsilon is 1. Somebody hands you 1. You want to make things work when epsilon is 1. So you say, okay, so I need, I need this distance, f of x minus 2, right? I want that to be less than 1, okay? Well, we know that that inequality is equivalent to saying minus 1 is less than f of x minus 2 less than 1. And if we add... 2 all the way across, this is equivalent to saying that f of x has to be between 1 and 3. Okay? All right. Um, where f of x is, what? f of x is, let's put that in, this is just root x. Okay. Now we can use that to tell us something about what, where x has to be, right? Because if I need root x to be between 1 and 3, well, everything is positive here. And as long as everything is positive, you're allowed to square um, inequalities, and, and you'll preserve the inequality. So of course, 1 squared is, is still 1. Squaring the square root gets rid of it. So we have x. 3 squared gets me to 9. Okay. Now, at this point, you stop and you think, okay, what am I trying to do? Oh, I, I need to figure out how close x has to be to 4. And so what you want to do here is say, okay, let's, let's take a look at this sort of on, on, you know, like on our number line, right? So here's our number line starting, let's say, at 0, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, going up to 9. Okay, here's 1, okay, 2, 3, here's 4, over here is 9, right? So I need x to be in here, right? But I want to I wanna make this symmetric, right? I want to phrase it like this. I want to say that the distance between x and 4 is less than some delta. So what I do is I come back, 
I single off, here's my four, right? And I look, which is closer? One or nine, which of those is closer to four? Well, certainly one is, right? So this distance from here to here, that's gonna be my delta, right? It's the smaller of the two. So I can say that if delta is, so that distance from one to four is three, And if x minus 4 is less than delta, what does that tell me? That tells me that, well, minus 3 is less than x minus 4 is less than 3, which tells me that x is between 1 and 7. And that tells me that root x is between 1 and, well, root 7. Um, and if we wanted to, we could say, hey, and I know that root 7, right, is, is smaller than 3, right? I know it's smaller than 3. So minus 1 is less than root x minus 2 is less than 1. And that means that root x minus 2 is less than 1, which is my epsilon. All right, that's the general idea. Yeah. Um, and so what we want to do here is we want to we want to now figure out how do you how do you make this work? Um, if epsilon isn't 1, if epsilon is some arbitrary number. How do we modify the argument to make it work? Um, we'll show you how to do that in the next video.